uh, and please join. Some of the questions, um, some of the questions are individual, so just answer them. Uh, some of the questions are open, so you can chat, you can talk with other people, and there is no time limit. For most of the things, there is a time limit, so you probably will not have enough time to chat, and we're gonna chat afterwards. So just answer what you think is the correct answer, uh, and then we will uh, discuss. So please join, uh, please prepare yourself, and then everything goes. So if you have a GHCI open, you can look it up. So you can use GHCI, but as I said, most questions are they have a time limit, so you have to be either really quick with GHCI or you kind of need to know in your head. All right, so let's start with something simple. So what are structures? So as I said, structures are um, a little bit more abstract in Haskell than you typically use them in other programming languages. And what we mean here is containers, of course. So um, containers for values, those are this is sort of like a structure, but different structures have different shapes. And I mean those things in quotes, like it's, it's a little bit of an abstraction, right? So you can think about lists, you can think about uh, binary lists, you can think about lists uh, or trees or values. For example, in SDL, there is a type called SDL um, V2. It's a two-dimensional vector or V3 right? This is a structure. It holds two values or three values, right? Um, and you may think, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a type. It's just a tuple or something. Yeah, it is, but it is also a certain structure. And some structures carry, carry certain context with them, right? So for example, maybe, uh, maybe has a value, but it also carries a context which says, the value might be nil, it can be nothing, right? So you have additional information. So we have some operations which preserve the structure and some which change the, 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 the shape or the, uh, the structure. So bear that in mind. So th this is just a little bit of a hand wavy, you know, um, abstract discussion on what is what. We have 31 questions, so we better keep cracking. Okay. Okay, so so also to make to spice things up, uh, because this is about Haskell, and this is sort of like uh, covering most of the more advanced things that we've done. The first person, like the best person out of the players, will have oblique one ticked off without coming to me. All right. So if you if you come up on top today, you have oblique one ticked. Nice, right? A, a bit of a motivation. So the first question. What is it? Perfect. Nobody did the wrong answer. We can do it. Like if we have, you know, 99% of correct answers and only one wrong, we have a chance to pass that. So all the answers are correct apart from the type. It's not the type. Why it's not the type? All right. So let's move on if you don't know the answer yet. Same question. So two answers are incorrect here. Everything else is correct. So um, fancy terms, semi-group, functor, applicative functor, and monad. Um, we learned those terms. Um, yeah, man, one wrong thing. Maybe it's not a type uh, because why? 
why this this bracket thing is not a type and one maybe is not a type because those those things are star into star those things are functions which you have to give them a concrete type and then they will give you a concrete type so those are type constructors right so this is a concrete type and this is a concrete type but this are not concrete types yet they have a variable right okay so um semi group functor applicative and monad uh you kind of don't really need to know all the laws and all the math behind it but you kind of need to remember that semi group you just have two structures and you can combine them together to achieve the same structure right so it's kind of like a um some abstract type let's say or, or structure and then you can combine it with uh, with another like you have one value you have another value and if you combine them you get the same type again right so that's a semi group uh functor you have a structure and you have another structure and you can apply like fmap on um on the structure so you, i have a normal function and i have a structure and i can apply a function to something which is inside so that's functor applicative functor is very similar but now i have the function inside the, the structure in the functor case the the, fun, the function is normal but in applicative case it kind of goes inside inside the structure so i have a structure and i can use it as if it was a function so i can apply it to another structure of the same type and then the monad the, the difference between applicative and monad is a little bit um it's a little bit more complicated because in applicative if i'm applying one function to another i'm losing the context of of that original function i only get what the second one had with monad i can carry a certain additional context to the second one right yeah so let's continue and hopefully you will get the uh the intuition so we're dealing here with structures and the structure is kind of like a value in a, in a context so the next one going back to the square brackets so in the exam you will have questions poss possibly like those and you will have a multi select so if there are two correct answers you have to select both right um so square bra open bracket for a list is both a type constructor and the actual data constructor why it is why it is a data constructor yeah yeah, because it is kind of an empty list. It's 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 a uh, uh, it represents, as you said, like you can concatenate the value into the list, but it re itself it represents a value, right? So if I I can say I have empty list concatenated with one, and this is a value, right? Um, so it's an instance of a list. It's an empty list. So I can create an empty list by by using those two brackets. So it's a data constructor and a type constructor. Perfect. So then uh, we have, if you give it a type, you will get a concrete type, right? So if this is the type constructor, because if I give it a concrete type as a parameter, I get a concrete thing. This is like a pseudocode because it's a star into star, right? So for example, this, this is a type, uh, a list of ints, it's a type, right? All right. So then let's carry on as we said square brackets is also an empty list and that's why it's a data constructor because you can construct an empty list by using this notation by square brackets um what type is that empty list of so what type is that value polymorphic it's a list of generic types it can be a list of any type yeah would you break that as just list of star items or 
yeah, you could say it's a list of star, but uh, we don't like we use the, the star notation for kinds. So we say uh, we have a, a, a type constructor is kind of a concrete type into a con like a parameter of the constructor of the type constructor is you give it a concrete type and it returns you a concrete type. But here, if we are talking about values, we sort of one level down. So we usually have a, you could say star, but we usually use a, a letter to denote a kind of a, a type, type variable, right? So we say usually it's a it's a list of A's. Uh, so that the type of this is is a, a list of A's, and A can be any type, right? But it, it's kind of the same. Like uh, for kinds, we use a star. For types, we use a kind of a letter. It's, it's just a, a convention, but the analogy is, is correct. All right, so we're getting somewhere. Um, next one. Maybe. Again, mark all that are correct. So how many? Have we correct here? Three, three, you can only click on. You only click, click one. I know, I know. There's only one correct here. <laughs> but in the exam, you will have uh, more ability. Like in, in uh, Mentimeter, I cannot do those type of questions, right? But he, uh, in the exam, I, I can. But anyway, here there is only one correct answer. So maybe it's it's only a type constructor because it needs a concrete type to become a concrete type. So for example, maybe int that is a concrete type why maybe is not the data constructor because to construct a value of maybe something type we not use maybe what do we use that's the next question what are the data constructors for maybe So this uh, software is case insensitive and it doesn't understand human <laughs> notations. So nothing and just, a, is it, this is a correct answer. Um, let me see. Can I make it? Okay. Voting is closed. Can I do this? I cannot do this. So anyway, just is correct. Nothing is correct. Uh, nothing and just I. This is correct. This is correct. Uh, this is correct. So there is a lot of correct things, but the software is a little bit dumb because it, you have to type them as individual things in one line. So it sort of didn't count it the correct things as correctly as we wish. Okay, next one. So let's do something with those things. So we've learned about maybes and we've learned about lists. So let's do something. So let's apply multiplication to the value of the maybe type, which we have. So we have a structure and now we have a function and we want to do something with the value. So how could we do this? You kind of need to guess what to uh, 
what the computer wants. So don't type human answers, type like answers which are kind of a succinct. Perfect. So that's a perfect answer. Um, this is almost a perfect answer, but you kind of need the brackets for the second part. So this is correct, but the syntax is slightly off. Uh, you need the, the brackets here. Like uh, <laughs> this one is correct, but there is a typo. It should be F map, not map F. Um, so yes, this and F map is correct, right? So we basically having a function and we have a structure and we can use this structure as a functor. So maybe is a functor. So, uh, yeah. So it has kind of the uh, mapping of, uh, of a normal function to itself and then it works. So that's how we would apply a normal function to a structure. So here a little bit more elaborate uh, example. How we would do this. It's very analogous. Okay, so fmap works the same way as before. So you can apply this function to the structure. Um, this one is also correct because uh, for lists, we have um, a function called map. So I don't know why uh, those answers are not marked as correct. Yeah, some computer glitch, I guess. But you get the idea. So you basically have mapping of a function over a structure. And for a list, it will kind of do it for all, uh, all the elements. Um, so this one is also correct. So this is what functors are. So a functor is ability to apply a function over a value within a structure, right? We do that using fmap. So perfect. So now one step up. We have a function inside the structure. So will, will fmap work here? No, it will not work. So that is the limitation of the functor, right? So a normal fmap will not work. We need something more fancy. We need kind of a slightly more abstract. And in that case, it's an applicative. So applicative allows us to combine a function in the structure with a structure, with a value in a structure. So that's exactly what applicatives do. Uh, it's kind of a one step up. Uh, so now we can kind of apply a function in a structure over a value in a structure. Um, so this works. Um, this is this works, but it should be ten, not twenty. Uh, F map. No, that will not work. Um, this will work. No, this will not work. You you kind of forgot the just here. This will not work. So this will work. This is a correct, correct answer. And that's what the applicative brings in. It brings two things. This, which is kind of like an F map, but on the structural level. And it brings one more thing, which is pure, which is just converting a normal thing into a thing in the structure, inside the structure, right? 
Okay, next one. So applicative functor, we have more power now. Um, applicative allows us to wrap a function inside a structure and then apply it to a value in the same structure, right? So we can chain operations. That's why we sometimes have those uh, chains of uh, multiply like something, something, right? We have this kind of ability to compose something more elaborate by doing this operator on functions on the left-hand side and values on the, on the um, uh, right-hand side. Great. So let's see the next one. It kind of looks weird, but remember, list is just a structure. So at the end of the day, it's the same structure as any other structure, right? I need... So, yes, we do have some correct answers. It's exactly analogous to what we had just before. A list is also an applicative. And if you have a function inside a list, you can sort of, we, we don't use the term math, we use the term apply. You can apply that function inside the structure to the values in the same structure. So it works. This will work fine. Can you do fmap or map? No, you cannot because this function is inside the structure. So map or fmap will not work. Okay, so what if we have nothing on the left-hand side? How can that work? The left-hand side, doesn't have a function. There is nothing. So what are we gonna get? We're gonna get nothing, exactly. Why it is not a compiler error? Well, because that's exactly what this operator does. This operator works with the function inside the structure. So we have some structure and we have a function inside it. And it, then we have the structure and we have a value inside it. And it will always work. It has to produce an, a value. It has to produce something. So even if we have nothing and we have the maybe, we are operating within the maybe structure, uh, even if this side is nothing, it should work. It, it will never blow up, right? So it will produce nothing because there is no value. So like, what can we do? Okay. Um, what is, uh, yeah. So that was the, that one let's do. Yeah, this one is, yeah, all right, all right. Pay attention. Very good. 
we cannot map functions in, in structures to anything. That's what applicatives are, but not functors. So fmap or mapping will not work. Compiler, the compiler will complain, will say, ah, oh, what do you mean? You cannot do that. Good. All right, next one. Mapping nothing over just 10. Easy, right? We just said you cannot map applicatives over a value. You can apply them, but you cannot map them. It's a compiler error again. So it will all again says, ah, what do you mean map? Like you can apply, you can put a star here, but not dollar. So it's a compiler error. So you have to pay attention sometimes to, to small, small things. So here again, pay attention. So now this one is easy. Everybody should get that one right. And you almost. <laughs> we still have some people insisting you can do something with it. No, you cannot. It's a compiler error. It's a compiler error for two reasons. Okay, one reason is the you cannot map applicatives over. The second reason is even if you could in fmap, what's on the left hand side? Function, something to do, not a value, right? All right, so then next one. We, we've seen a lot of compiler errors. So we've been trying to do it. We've tried to do it. Compiler was complaining, 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 and eventually we got it right. That's exactly what we need, right? Function on the left-hand side, map, a functor value on the right. Works. Perfect. So this is not a compiler error. This is exactly what fmap is doing. So, okay. A weird one. So now we kind of going into a bit of a nested territory. We have a normal function on the left. We have a map, which is fine. It compiled, it compiled just before. And now it doesn't compile anymore. The compiler complains again. So, okay, we have a bit of a problem, right? We want to get just 20. We we have to do it. We have to mu multiply it by two. We have to get just, just 20. So how are we going to do that? So normal fmap was not working. We have a nested structure. What do we need to do? So we do have a value, the value is 10. Can we multiply it by two? Yes, we can. Okay, so at the end of the day, it has to work. But we have one structure and then we have the outer structure. So we have two layers. It happens to be the same structure, like the inner structure is maybe, maybe int. The outer structure is not maybe int. The outer structure is maybe, maybe int. Right. OK, 
Can we use FMAP? Yes, I think we should be able to use FMAP because we do have functors and they are kind of nested. But can we do it with a single FMAP? Probably not. We probably need two FMAPs because we need to map something first over the outer structure and then the second one over the inner structure, right? So we kind of need to do it through two fmaps. And then it's just kind of a matter of getting a syntax correctly. Um, once you know that you need two fmaps, the actual syntax, yeah, you can work it out. It's not as important. Like we can always, you know, ask chat GPT or uh, like IDE to correct the syntax for us. But we kind of need to know that we need those two fmaps. All right, so let's have a, let's have a look. Press enter to show the answers. So why it doesn't say, there is something broken with this Mentimeter. Anyway, um, that's one possible correct answer. Um, we basically have to have two F maps. So we have to um, apply the F map to the internal uh, structure. Uh, not, none of this is correct because you had two justs, right? So you have to have just, just. So let me see. Yeah, I don't know what happened with this. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this this one is an open-ended question, so it doesn't have the uh, the actual correct answer built in. So we have to kind of uh, write the correct answer. So let's look, let's look which one is the correct answer. Um, this one is almost the correct answer, but it should be ten here, and multiplied by two should be in brackets, uh, and then you have to have the additional f map, right? So we have to have something like this. Um, F map multiply by two, and here is the dollar sign. And then we have just, just, there should be a space and just should be capitalized. So this one is kind of um, uh, almost correct. Yeah, this one is, this one is correct. Or no, it's not quite correct. You, you need just because we have two, those two indentations. So I think I have, no, I don't have the correct answer, but it is basically F map. And then this F map is for the outside structure. So we have just outside and then inside we have just 10. So this F map is for the outside structure and then it needs a function which will be applied to the inner one. So that's another F map. And then this F map needs a function, which is a multiply by two. And this function will be applied to the value. So we have the outside F map, the inside F map. So this one is for this just, this one is for this just, and this one is for the value. So that's how it looks like. And then because this F map needs two parameters, we need to put this whole thing into a brackets. So then we have this F map, this F map, and this F map will have the value passed over there. So we can turn this one kind of in into the infix notation. So we can say F map uh, multiply by two, and then we can do this infix notation and have this uh, just just ten, right? So then we have two two F maps, and then it will work. 
Okay, so knowing that uh, doing this one is just a matter of adding extra F map. Like now we have three layers and we have to do F map three times. So remember, fmap takes two arguments. It takes a function, and it takes the second argument is what the function will be applied on. on. So we have the, 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 the outside one. So we've just, just, one, two, one more just. So we have just, just, just 10. One bracket, second bracket. So that's our structure. And then we need three F maps. The first one, F map will be applied on this. So the first one, we can kind of sneak in into this dollar sign here. And then we put the whole thing into brackets. And then the second one will have to have the third one. And the third one has the actual multiplication two, right? So now we have one, two, three. This one is the outside one. This one is the second one. And then this one is the one which is applied here and the multiply by two is applied to here. Okay, let's see if you got that right. Yeah. That looks that looks fine. Uh, onions, yes, <laughs> yes. It is tempting to use a dot, and I fall a victim of that myself. There is no dots because F map takes two arguments. Each single F map will always take two arguments, which means when you're carrying something, when you want to carry, like uh, if you want to con uh, combine functions, we're using the dot. You always kind of remember, yeah, I can only do that when the function takes one argument. If something takes two arguments, the dot will kind of don't work. It, it feels it should work, but it will not work. It like the dot only works if something takes one argument. So in this case, you basically cannot have this dot here. So without this dot, you kind of put this thing into the, the brackets and then it will work, right? So this is correct. If you delete the dot and put the second F map into brackets, like this one works fine, although it's one too many, because we already have four F maps. You have one, two, three, four. We only need three, right? But you got the idea. So I think you kind of uh, you got the idea. So the next one is the next one is something that you will. Notice in your code, you have just 10, but 10 is in a list. And you want to apply, multiply by two to this 10, which is inside the list, which is inside the just. How are we gonna do that? So this just, just 10 is basically outer structure, inner structure, value. Two layers, onion with two layers, same as this one. Outer structure, inner structure, value. It's the same, same thing. So in this case, we did like with the two, 
we did fmap plus another fmap we did two fmaps right it's exactly what you need to do here so this is perfect answer we're doing two fmaps we're doing a fmap for the inside of the inner structure for the list so this fmap times two is for this list with 10 and this one is for the just so the outside one and the inner one um this one is almost correct but you kind of need to remember that fmap takes two arguments right so you kind of the the notation is is wrong because the notation needs to be something like this this one is correct because this map applies to the to the list so this one is a correct answer but the computer was sort of expecting fmap not map but this this is a correct answer as well um this one is not correct because applicative expects a function in the structure we don't have any structure on the left hand side uh and so on right so this one is also correct uh outside outside one in 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 one this one is correct as well i don't know why the computer thinks this one is not correct but it is i think you've got the idea um so now you have the same task but now you cannot use fmap i say wow we cannot use fmap so what can we do what can we do All right, so this one requires a little bit of knowledge. And if you don't have this knowledge, we basically can hack around the task or we can try to uh, find the, the solution, okay? So let's go to Hugo. And remember what we need to do. Uh, we need to do this we have a function which is from a to b and then we have a value which is a inside a structure inside a structure and we want to get kind of a new function um, new structure new value inside the, this structure and this structure and we want to preserve the structures so if we type this query to Google. So we basically say, okay, look, we have a function from A to B. And then the second parameter is we have some structure F of G of value A, right? So we have some structure F, which is our outside structure. We have in internal structure, which is structure G. And we want to preserve the structure. So we want to preserve F uh, and then G, but we're gonna get B uh, at the end, right? So we have a function, we have a value in a structure and we want to uh, get it um, get it out. You will get some suggestions which are not correct yet. The um, The problem is, Remember when, when we had the original problem um, with applying a normal function to a value inside the structure, we use fmap. And then when we nested it, when we nested a structure inside another structure, we basically applied fmap twice, right? So let's, let's rewrite our query to say, okay, okay, let's not deal with the um, nested structures. Let's deal with the... Um, uh normal structures first right so we have a normal function um and then we have a value inside the structure and then we have uh the new thing but that's exactly what fmap is right so it tells us yeah, yeah use fmap right either in the normal notation or infix notation 
And if we look for an alternative, it's like, uh, there is no alternative, right? So in general, general case, uh, fmap is the only solution that is the solution and then you basically nest it twice but there is a hint so hint says use an applicative okay let's let's use the hint let's let's decipher it and let's use the hint so let's say applicative f is an applicative we will make additional constraint on what the structure is and it will say the structure is not a generic structure. It's not a functor. It is actually an applicative, okay? And here is the solution. The solution is lift A. So lift A is kind of like an F map, but it lifts a function, a normal function to from A to B to a different function from FA to FB. So if you look at the signature, like, uh, yeah, let me duplicate this twice. Duplicate and we go back. Uh, yeah, 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 we cannot go back, but we can delete this constraint. So if we do it in general case, fmap, fmap is the answer. And the fmap says f is constrained to a functor, right? It, F has to be a functor, otherwise you cannot F map over a value inside that structure. To be able to F map something over a, a value in a structure, the structure needs to be a functor. Fair enough. So that works, and that works for, uh, for functors. And the signature is exactly the same as for the lift, but lift is kind of the equivalent of applicative, um, uh, uh, equivalent of a F map for applicatives. So the Signature is exactly the same. You use it exactly the same way, but it only works for applicatives. So in our case, when we say do the same with without fmap uh, to apply this function over uh, a value inside this structure, inside this structure, we can ask ourselves, is this structure an applicative? Yes, it is. Is the outside structure applicative? Yes, it is. Okay, we can use lift, right? So let's see what you did. Yeah. So using a lift is a way to solve it. So you basically lift this function to a new level, to a kind of a, a functor or applicative. And then we can lift this function to the just level. So this. The, uh, sorry, the, the first one, the first lift lifts our multiplication function to the level of this structure, to the level of the list. And then the second one uh, brings it up to the level of just, and then we can have the answer, right? The, the good thing about, um, the good thing about, uh, let's go back. The good thing about lifts is that lift is composable. So you can um, you can compose them together to take a single argument. So with lifts, I can use a dot. So I can say, um, look, I'm lifting and lifting. I'm lifting the function twice. And this is the function which I want to lift twice. And then um, I apply this lifted function to this internal structure. So to the value 10, which is inside the first structure inside the second one. So with lifts, it's kind of nice because we can compose them, right? All right, so we learned um, we learned new, new thing, which is um, lifting. And this is the actual code from the lab. It's from uh, Oyston, uh, where he did use the fmap twice for lifting the value, which is in the uh, SDLv2 vector. But you need to, and th this is like two levels because you have a single level, which is the uh, v2. So that's the inner level. And then the whole thing is inside IO. 
So if we want to apply, and we have value X and Y, right? If we want to apply a function F to X and to Y, we have to, we have to do F map, uh, but because we also have the outside structure, we have the IO, we have to say F map, right? So we have to do it twice. And that's exactly like the code he used, and that's how he applied that, that twice. So it's actually uh, nice, like you can, uh, you know, use it. You could rewrite it to use lifting, right? So you could say, I have a function f, and I need to lift it twice because I want to apply it to here and here. Um, so I will not use f map. I will uh, lift, lift a and lift a. I will lift it twice, um, and then this will be applied to that to that value, and I'm lifting that function twice, right? So lift, lift this function twice and then apply it to that value, right? All right, so lift, great. So can we do this? Another small problem. We have a function in a structure and then we have a value in a structure. Uh, we know that it's this kind of applicatives, right? Uh, and the, the star is to combine applicatives. Can we do this? No, we cannot do this. Exactly. Why? Because there are two different structures. An applicative only works on the left and right hand side being the same structure. So if you have two different structures and one on left hand side, we have a list on the right hand side, we have a maybe. Yeah, they are kind of, they cannot be combined. But if you have list and list or maybe and maybe you can combine, right? Because the applicative, this applicative apply will, will work. Very good. So now about this one. We already had that. We already had that question and you, you already know the answer to that question. Type it such a way that the computer is happy. Yes, of course, it's it's trivial, right? Uh, some people got <laughs> got caught by always using multiply too. It's a plus. Why I didn't use multiply? Because stupid Mentimeter, if you have two stars, it tries to uh, italic things for you. <laughs> so you can only have one star. If you have two, it doesn't work, right? So I have to change this star to a plus for this to render properly. Anyway, it's plus 12. Okay, so that's easy. You kind of get it. All right, a little bit more, um, a little bit more fancy. Because it's a list. In a list, I can have more than one thing. I don't, I am not restricted to just one thing, right? So now I have a structure with two functions and then the same structure with a value. What I'm gonna get back. This is very intuitive. Like uh, you should, even if you don't know, you should guess. Yep, the answer is 1220 because this function is going to get applied to this value and wrapped in the structure. And then this function is going to get applied to this value and wrapped in the same structure. So I'm going to get 1220. I'm going to get a list 1220. So that's the correct answer. Um, okay. 
How about a single function and two values? Should be simple. Twelve twenty two. Uh, because I'm going to apply this function to this value, which is 12, and then I'm going to apply this function to this value, which is 22. So I'm going to get 1222, which is perfect answer here, four times. Not too bad. All right. So now a super fancy case. I have two functions and two values. Wow. You may be wondering like how it will work. It will go from left to right or how, you know, how, how the application is gonna go. And it kind of goes from left to right. So the first function is being applied to the first value. And then the first function is being applied to the second value. And then the second function is being applied to the first value and second function to the second value. So 12, 22, 12, 22, and then plus 10, 20, 30. So this is the correct answer. Perfect. So this is uh, what we used in the previous lecture, which was a little bit confusing, right? So we, we, we're going to do that twice, OK? So imagine that I have a function, which is plus, and I have a function, which is multiply. And then I'm going to combine it with two things. I'm going to combine it with. What, what was the second one with, with and 10, right? And then I'm gonna combine it again with, let's do just a single value for now. Oh uh, yeah, we can do two values. Again, 10 and 20, okay? So now those functions are binary functions. They take two arguments. I have, um, yeah, let's let's do a single value because uh, otherwise we 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 will go crazy. <laughs> I will not be able to do it on the board. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's do just that. So we have this um, those binary functions which are gonna be applied to the two two values now, right? So let's do this first, right? So what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up with this function to the first value, which is plus two this function to the second value, which is plus 10, this function to the first value, which is multiply two, this function to the second value, which is multiply 10, right? That's our result of doing that. And then we're gonna combine it with a value 10, right? So then we're gonna do two plus 10, that's 12, two, that, that, there is only one value. So 10 plus 10, 20, multiply by uh, 2, 20, multiply by 10, 100, okay? So you get it? So if we have something like this with two uh, things, uh, you can kind of do the first thing first, get the new list, and then do the second one with the new list with this, and then you get the third list, and the third list is your result, right? If I did have this, you know, uh, comma 20, we would have to do those or, you know, uh, twice, right? So we would get kind of uh, eight items, right? Okay, so that's, that's perfect. Uh, so then let's go a little bit more into it and let's do this. 
So now we, those, those functions were kind of our pure functions. We had a structure and then we were doing operations on values and then we got the new structure. Here we have kind of a structure in, um, uh, in, a, uh, in a structure, not, not yet, but we, we're doing a kind of a, uh, a simple things first. So we're doing plus two and then constructing a structure, right? So what, what are we gonna get from here? This is the same notation, uh, either with the, exactly, we're gonna get just 12. So we kind of, you know, applying plus two to 10, which is plus 12, and then saying, yeah, build just from it, right? So we're gonna get just 12, that's easy. So I, I hope, how many, four, nah, not so easy, but it should be easy, right? Um, you're basically doing plus two and then building just from it. So you're gonna get just 12. Okay, so um, next one. We're doing the same, but this time over multiple values in the other structure, right? What are we gonna get? Just 12, just 22. So we're doing the same thing as before, but this time to 10 and then to 12, 20. And then we have both of them in the um, in the list, in the structure. So three, three, six, perfect. So more, more people get it. All right, so now we get this list, just 12, just 22. All right, so... We want to turn it upside down. We want to take the inner structure and kind of flip it like a t-shirt, uh, you know, inside out. So we, we kind of uh, converting the outer structure to be the inner structure and the inner structure to be the outer structure. Again, it's like, it looks pretty hard. It looks pretty horrible, right? Uh, how could you do that? How could you flip the inner structure out and outer structure in. Do you know how to do it? No. Yeah, me neither. So let's go and look for it, the answer. So let's go to Google. Google is our friend. And we ask a query. So what the query is, it says we have the outer structure F and we have the inner structure G and outer structure like this. And then what we want to get is we want to flip it around to say the inner structure is now is the outer structure and the outer structure is now the inner structure. And here is the answer, right? There is a function which does exactly what we are after. Um, it says, yep, you can have an inner structure inside the outer structure and I will flip it for you, right? So let's uh, let's quickly let's go quickly to uh, okay. So let's go quickly here to GHCI and play with it. So where where is it? Where is it? It's in uh, data traversable, but it's also in prelude. So if we ask sequence A. It says, yeah, yeah, I know about sequence. Uh, I can flip those things for you. So if we say just 10 uh, and we say sequence that, it will say, yep, it's a list of just 10. I have just list of 10 and it will flip it into a list of just 10. Great, so it sort of looks like what we were looking for. So let's see what people did. 
Yeah, flip would be nice. Uh, yes, that's exactly what we're looking for. So we're looking for sequence. And the sequence is, uh, you have to say just 10, just 20, uh, whatever that, that thing was, which we were doing. Um, so, okay. So now I just did that, right? So change just 10 into a list of just 10. So we've done, we've done that. Uh, so how about change just 10, just 20 into just 10 and 20? Well, sequence is your answer. So if you sequence this, you, you're going to get just and the list 10 and 20, right? So sequence A is exactly flipping the structures for you around. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, perfect. So those are those are all correct answers. Uh, this is also a correct answer. So it, it's very nice. So we learned about sequence. So sequence is a magic which allows us to kind of uh, turn the inner out and outer in, and it works. Uh, it works very well. So here we have a similar case. We have a list of lists. And then we want to turn it into a single list. And there are multiple ways to do that on lists. And you probably should know at least two or three ways of doing it with lists. So how can you do that? How can you turn a list of lists into a, a list of items? Each list has only one element in, in this case. So we go here and we say, okay, we have a list of lists. Okay, how can we turn it into a flat list? So shout, like, tell me, what do you know? Yep. Concat, perfect. So concat is exactly doing that. What else can you use? We just learned about sequence. So let's use sequence as well. Sequence that works also, but there is a twist in, in sequence, right? A sequence says, well, I can see it's a, it's a outer structure with inner structures and the inner are kind of um, um, combined. So I, I will prepare you a list from the inner things, but this list is wrapped in the outer structure as well. So sequence for list preserves the outer, outer structure, right? If, if we use A, it's going to be the same. What else can you do? Yeah, let's see what people came up with. Folding, yes, uh, sequencing, concat. Um, yeah, so you, you can kind of explore. Um, but the thing is that sequence didn't solve what we wanted here, right? That that was the, the main point. Okay, how about just, just 10 into just 10? We want to collapse the kind of uh, hierarchy of our structures. Um, such that we end up with just 10. Do you know how to do it? Okay, first question. If I sequence just just 10, what would I get? So if I say sequence just just 10, what will I get back? Just just 10 I would get. <laughs> because the inner thing will go outside, the outside thing will go inside and I will end up with the same thing right? Because it's kind of symmetric. <laughs> so I would end up with just, just then what I started with. Okay. But we want to collapse that. Okay. You may not know. So if you don't know, again, we have to search. So we kind of have, we have the outer structure and the inner structure and they are the same. And we want to turn it into a flat uh, single thing, right? And 
here is your answer it's join so if we were to combine just just 10 into just 10 and we want to collapse one level like we want to collapse the level of our nesting to a single level then i would use flip right so doing um yeah that that would work but that would be unsafe because if on the right hand side i have nothing that would kind of uh blow up right um so you could try to extract this value out of the inner structure and kind of a collapse one level uh but um you um now from just yeah let me see i don't remember if from just is uh, yeah so it's unsafe right it takes maybe a and produces a so if there is a nothing it will kind of throw an exception right uh all right so let's quickly move on we learned about join so join is a very useful um function which collapses one level for you um okay an easy one we have um four questions left so we have to kind of uh, hurry up a little bit so what is the function which returns a that's an easy one The correct answer is ID. That's four people got it right. Uh, what's the function which always returns A in this case? So there is a function which takes two arguments and always returns A. You may think, oh, those functions are totally useless. Like, they, like, what would you use ever an identity function for, right? I mean, if I already have A, why would I apply identity function to A if I already have A? Yeah. There is uh, one case in this lecture where identity function is super useful. Okay, so in this case, it's a const. So this one is a correct answer. We want const because const ignores the second argument and returns you the A. All right, so then we have uh, two quizzes, quick quizzes. Is a monad type class a subclass of applicative? Is applicative a superclass of monads? Do all monads are applicatives? Do you know a monad which is not an applicative? Yes, all monads are applicatives. In Haskell, they did they didn't have applicative uh, before the monads, so the class hierarchy is somewhat um, complicated. But all functor is a superclass of applicative, and applicative is a superclass of monads. It's a clear hierarchy. Okay, is this one correct? Return is a function which takes a and returns uh, m a for monads. Is that signature correct or not? Yes, it is correct. That's what return is. Okay, bind. A trick trick question. I normally don't have trick questions in the exams, but this one is a trick, trick question. Bind, is the signature for bind correct?
quick, 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 quick. No, it's not correct. It's not correct because there is no space between M and B. That is like a single symbol, right? I, I told you it's a trick question. All right, so let's do this one. There is a space now between M and B. It's not a single symbol, it's a two symbols. So yay. So now it's a proper question. It's not a trick question. Is that signature correct for uh, monads, for bind? Yeah, it's subtle, but you can see that it is incorrect. Why it's incorrect? Because bind takes a monadic value on the left-hand side. It doesn't take a plain value. So there is a M space missing in the, in the beginning, right? It needs to be a monadic value, monadic function, and monadic value as the output. So three people got it right. All right, last, last final question. And we will know the winner. So is monad type class implemented by return and bind in Haskell? So how do we implement monadic type classes for our types? By implementing return and, and bind? And the answer is? Yes, it is true. We do implement return and bind for our monads. So there is one more, one more, and then we have the leaderboard. So if we always implement return and bind, can we actually implement the monad by implementing return and join instead? Remember the join, which was kind of a collapsing one level for us? So can we implement our monad type with implementing just return and join. That is too long because you either know it or you don't. <laughs> you cannot like uh, think, think about it. So the answer is, It's true. The answer is true. You can implement everything with just join and return. So here we have our leaderboard. We do have uh, the winner. Hula hop, who is hula hop? Great. Obliguan done, man. <laughs> All right, so then as a homework, because I ran out of time, um, you have to, uh, three tasks. The first task is to implement bind for maybe yourself by hand. How would you do that? That's an easy task because I think we've already done it in the lecture. And then a kind of a more elaborate task is um, implement bind generically with map, fmap and join. How would you implement bind with fmap and join? Okay. Um, and then the last one, how would you implement uh, join with bind? So because we're implementing monads with return and bind, everything else, fish, join, all the other operations on monads, we can derive from those two. So then the question is, how would you do that? So that's all today. Uh, thank you very much. And I will put the slides on so you can kind of think about the final three things, uh, how you're implementing different functions in the in the other ones. And I hope you get a bit more of uh, intuitions about how you use it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, online people.